go back to the scenario some cases okay so anybody wants to read this this is a very simple question on the uh, action of a cytokine anybody wants to read this i will do doctor yes yes please uh, proceed doctor tumor necrosis factor is a cytokine released as a part of the acute phase response and the tnf alpha agents are used in the management of many inflammatory conditions including rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease which of these is a function of tumor necrosis factor inhibition of prostaglandins okay now let us discuss the concept so tumor tnf is an acute phase reactant that means it is usually released whenever there is usually inflammation isn't it okay mm -hmm. so it bound to reduce inflammation isn't it? it it has to reduce inflammation and when we know during inflammation what happens there is vasodilatation there is what is called as a or margination of the neutrophils and the lymphocyte and there is something called as diapedesis where there is a neutrophil and the lymphocyte may pass through the interendothelial junction and reach the site of injury or inflammation which is known as chemotaxis okay so this is in general about the mechanism of inflammation okay now these are anti-inflammatory drugs okay so uh, it has to inhibit some inflammatory pathways okay so mm -hmm. If you read this five option, you'd find that stimulation of appetite. Okay, so does he have got any role in as an anti-inflammatory? It may stimulate or uh, or decrease appetite, but that does not uh, that is not the main reason we we are giving as anti-inflammatory drug, isn't it? Okay, mm -hmm. okay, and peripheral insulin sensitization. And we we have covered diabetes, and we do not have not come across TNF. Your blockers yeah. or TNF agonist as a treatment of uh, type 2 diabetes, isn't it? Peripheral insulin sensitization would be one of the mechanisms by which we target for type 2 diabetes, isn't it? Type 2 diabetes is a condition where we have insulin resistance, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, okay. peripheral insulin sensitization is a mechanism by which metformin acts, okay? So, that has not got a role in TNF. Now, which are the prostaglandin blockers which you know, which one which, which are the drugs which are used as prostaglandin blockers? Or inhibition of the prostaglandin pathway. Yeah, uh, aspirin, isn't it? Aspirin is a drug which uh, isn't it? Cyclooxygenase, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So aspirin is a, a drug which acts as an uh, as an anti anti platelet drug by basically blocking the prostaglandins. Okay. It's inhibition of angiogenesis. Okay. Have you heard angiogenesis? Which are, which is the factor which is involved in angiogenesis? Have you heard any factors? IL two. No, no. angiogenesis by VEGF, okay, vascular endothelial growth factor. Have you heard VEGF? <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, so angiogenesis has got role important in two scenarios. One is presence of proliferative diabetic retinopathy. You heard all of you heard proliferative diabetic retinopathy, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a condition where there is formation of new vessels in a ischemic retina. Okay. Now this mm -hmm. happens because of the release of vascular endothelial growth factor by the ischemic retina. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the treatment of diabetic retinopathy, we use anti-VEGF therapy. Okay, VEGF therapy. Okay. So, okay. have you heard any drugs anti-VEGF drugs? Redolizumab. Okay. Any other drugs you have heard recently? Okay, so we use them as uh, intravitreal therapy, isn't it? You mm -hmm. heard of this using intravitreal therapy? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, so the common drug which we use clinically is bevacizumab. Okay, bevacizumab or ranibizumab. Okay, these are the two, but the most commonly we use is bevacizumab. Okay. 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 So the 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 A option is induction of corticotropin releasing hormone. What is this corticotropin releasing hormone means? This hormone is where where it is located or where it is produced. Hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. Excellent. Okay. So corticotropin releasing hormone is released from the hypothalamus. It acts on the uh, the pituitary gland, anti-pituitary gland, to produce ACTH, isn't it? Mm -hmm. ACTH I will act yeah. on the adrenal gland okay. to produce cortisol, isn't it? Okay. So that is the 
uh, common uh, pathways okay so any guesses what could be the most likely uh, uh, function of tnf here which acts as an anti inflammatory so you're going to target anti inflammatory pathways mm. inhibition of angiogenesis mm. most most likely okay 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 fine yeah. okay so the correct answer is option a okay that is induction of corticotropin releasing hormone basically it causes release of steroids okay because okay. tnf is one of the most powerful anti inflammatory drugs okay mm -hmm. uh, the or the uh, the uh, as an uh, anti inflammatory uh, condition which you use okay so it basically releases the cortisol okay so this is again see remember these topics are basically based not based on any clinical analysis these are based, basically if you go through this question you will be able to answer okay yeah so this is uh, probably a little easier one anybody wants to attempt this i will do doctor yeah 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 please go ahead yes 42 year old uh, atopic healthcare worker presents with red wheels on her on her arms uh, chest and neck and itchy erthematous hands within 20 minutes of wearing latest gloves she is also short of breath which of the following mechanism is most likely relevant this is anaphylaxis so i yes. guess sensitivity Yes, very good. Okay, so this patient has a reaction very uh, like within 20 minutes. Okay, yeah. so you think about type 1 hypersensitivity here. Okay, type 1 is most of the time it's Ig mediated. Okay, uh, just like an asthma. Okay, so answer is E. Okay, now mm -hmm. delayed type hypersensitivity is type 4. Okay, which is commonly associated with what is called contact dermatitis. Okay, okay. immune complex is type 3. Okay, example we have SLE. Mm -hmm. uh, B is complement mediated hypersensitivity reaction. Okay, so we don't have any terminology called complement mediated hypersensitivity reaction. Okay, uh, complements are a part of type two hypersensitivity that is antibody. Okay, and also part of type three. Okay, there is no condition known as complement mediated hypersensitivity as such. Okay, and uh, A is contact dermatitis. Contact dermatitis, as you know, is type four or delayed hyper hypersensitivity. Okay, so okay. the answer is correct. Ig mediated high sensitivity. Okay, let us go to the yes. Next question. Can you read this one? Twenty-four year old woman presents with generalized edema and ascites. Which of the following findings would support a diagnosis of a protein losing enteropathy rather than nephrotic syndrome? Are you able to understand here? They are asking which of this finding mm -hmm. does not fit in to nephrotic syndrome. That's what the they are asking. Are you able to understand this? Yeah. yeah. Would, which would prefer more to protein losing enteropathy rather than nephrotic syndrome? Okay, that means out of the five, four are fitting into nephrotic syndrome. One of the options is not fitting into nephrotic syndrome. Low IgG? Okay, low IgG. Okay, now what is nephrotic syndrome for you? What is nephrotic syndrome? Uh, presence of proteinuria. Okay. Uh, hypercholesteremia. Yes. Microalbuminemia. Okay, so nephrotic syndrome means we have first important is massive proteinuria. Okay, there should be nephrotic range proteinuria. Okay, proteinuria should be more than 3 or 3.5 gram per day. Okay, so when you are losing proteins, okay, now if you look at these plasma proteins, plasma proteins contains albumin, globulins, okay, correct, mm -hmm. uh, plasma proteins, okay, so we are losing a lot of proteins in the urine. Mm -hmm. Now this globulin could be alpha, beta and gamma based on their uh, movement in the electro during the electrophoresis, okay. Now the gamma fraction of the globulin, okay, which is called gamma globulin contains mm. antibodies basically gamma globulins are antibodies okay so that means if you're losing a lot of protein that means you're losing albumin plus globulins isn't it are mm. you able to follow mm. Mm -hmm. so if you're losing globulins in the urine means you're also losing gamma globulins isn't it okay that means you're losing some of the antibody in the in the urine that's why these patients are at risk for infection isn't it mm. okay so that means patient would have low serum IgG, okay, so that would be seen in nephrotic syndrome, isn't it? Mm. 
total cost. Actually, you have told the answer in the description <laughs> itself that. Yeah. Yeah, low cost, total cost. Isn't it? That should be very obvious, isn't it? Yeah. Because in nephrotic syndrome, you will have very high cholesterol. Okay. okay. Now, why we don't get that um, low cholesterol in protein losing enteropathy? Okay. Now, the, the reason for high cholesterol in nephrotic syndrome is that when you lose a lot of proteins, you're also losing lipoproteins, okay? Lipoproteins mm -hmm. are basically protein mixed with lipids, complex lipids, okay? Now, when you're losing a lot of lipoprotein, the liver will sense that you're losing a lot of protein. So, it will increase the synthesis of the proteins, okay? When mm -hmm. it increases the synthesis of the albumin and globulin, it also increases the synthesis of lipoproteins, okay? Mm -hmm. So, the increase synthesis or synthetic rate of lipoproteins is much higher than the rate at which it is lost okay mm -hmm. so when you have very high level of lipoproteins in the blood it will automatically bind with the cholesterol mm -hmm. okay so that's why you have the total cholesterol being much higher mm -hmm. okay in patient with nephrotic syndrome is it clear okay okay now what about this low albumin i think you know low albumin would be seen in nephrotic syndrome as well uh, what about frothy urine? Do you get frothy urine in nephrotic syndrome? Frothy urine, I didn't. Yeah, so frothy, mm -hmm. whenever you have massive protein, you do you get frothy urine. Okay, mm -hmm. this is one of the complaints which with the patient in nephrotic syndrome may visit to the clinic. Okay, frothy urine. Mm -hmm. What about old coagul? Do you find old coagulopathy in nephrotic? Yes. What is old yeah. coagulopathy means what? I put I hypercoagulable state okay hypercoagulable state okay now why do you have a hypercoagulable state in patient with the nephrotic syndrome you might have heard nephrotic syndrome patients are at risk for dvt isn't it i've heard yes. this yeah why why they are at risk for the um Deficiency of uh, clotting factors. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. What happens is you are losing a lot of clotting factors. Okay, so you have what you have. So you are losing both here because you know both clotting and the other fa the the anticoagulant. We have naturally anti occurring anticoagulant, which are mm -hmm. the one protein C, protein S, isn't it? Okay, so you are lose losing both the uh, naturally occurring anticoagulant plus clotting factor in the urine okay but what happens is that the the rate of synthesis of mm -hmm. the clotting factor is again much higher than the anticoagulant pathways okay mm -hmm. and factors so you'll have increased risk of thrombosis this is one factor second these pack patients would have what is known as the uh hype they usually have hyperviscosity because they have the lot of fluid within the interstitial spaces but the inside the vessel okay it is hyper viscosity because there is intravascular dehydration okay yeah so that would lead to increased thrombosis risk of thrombosis okay yes